And basically, my first job was in radio. I was a five years host of a radio show, uh, basically playing rock and roll and jazz and eclectic music, telling stories, provoking things, making people, you know, a lot of things. We were very successful. With One of the guys is Martin Hernandez, which has made the sound design in every film. So we start when we were 20 years. And uh, then I became the director of that radio station. So that was a very good school for me because I need to entertain people with music, with beats, with rhythm, with ideas, with conversation, blah, blah, blah. And then I studied theater two years with the incredible teacher, Ludwig Margules. That gave me a lot of, I think, experience in, in or I will knowledge, I think, that I needed. Yeah, in a way, I think it's true. So, I mean, uh, uh, people feel that it's true that sometimes when people overuse and help, or is not used properly as every technique. It's, it's, not, it's true that it's cheap and it, it's the MTV kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. That there's no reason why the camera, mm -hmm. but all, all these guys are doing this. You know? <laughs> uh, because nothing happened. We start working in 21 grams and originally was uh, written for Mexico. But then the, the character of Vinicio del Toro, which uh, originally was a lawyer, in Mexico City of high class, blah, blah, blah. Um, there was something that I wanted to explore, which was guilt. And it was not the guilt, as we understand, but it was a very metaphysical guilt about God. And so suddenly when that character became a very spiritual, conflicted guy, I thought that it would be better to go to the south of the United States, where I think religion plays a role in a more childish and obsessional and almost fundamentalist way than in Mexico. And so I thought there's a great opportunity here to play and to explore that character in the United States. And then it was an opportunity for me to go and work with Sean, which I have met before, and with Vinicio that I like. And I said, well, maybe there's a combination here for me to explore new territory. And honestly, I didn't want to feel comfortable. In suddenly in my country, Amores Perros was very successful, and I was like, okay, now it comes, Mr. Director, and we'll do, you know, it was very comfortable for me to do the next one with the same basis, and I need to be uncomfortable. If not, I feel bad, so. I have Michael's heart. I have Michael's heart. I remember how difficult was this scene, because I remember even since the beginning, and when, when it was uh, in, in the paper, uh, this is one of those things, this scene, that execution is all, because is there, is there a risky moment that yeah. you can expose yourself as a director is to have a scene like that where tons of melodrama are involved here. You know what I mean? Yeah. You cannot no. have much melodramatic <laughs> moment. You know what I mean? A woman whose husband heart has been to the other guy in the eye of I mean, it's, if you read that, I remember a friend of mine, Rodrigo Garcia, told me, if you survive that, you will be my hero. And it's true, I was part, I said, I don't know how to make that believable mm -hmm. and not be laughable. I said, ah, oh, come on, ha, 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 ha. I remember the first time that I screened the film, I was just like saying, if people doesn't laugh here, then the film will survive because this is an extremely radioactive material to play. <laughs> You can see this in telenovelas, by the way. <laughs> Editing for me is, is when you really make the film. Also, I mean, uh, very few things survive. I start discovering what is inside each of those stones. So you start polishing and sculpture that stone, and it's the, 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 suddenly the hippopotamus began to appear. And I said, wow, this is the hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. So everything that is not hippopotamus go out. So you have an hippopotamus here, and then you, oh, oh that's the giraffe. Ah, oh, great, oh, let's put it here. And then, so I mean, it's, it's a rewriting process. I, I have an O-1 visa, which is the artist visa. I'm not a uh, citizen of them. I live in Los Angeles, but every six months, my wife and my kids and I have to go back to Mexico and renovate that visa. And we have done that many times in Tijuana. So we cross the border, Tijuana, and then go back. So when we go from the United States and cross the border to, to Tijuana, nobody re review us. So it's an open border. Our country said, welcome to the gringos. We can have an atomic bomb or a kidnapped guy, whatever, but nobody will review us. Or guns, which is normally what goes in. 
But when we go back, it's like a two, three hour line of cars and it's scrutinizing the way they, they, they review. And sometimes this character is inspiring. One time that we went there and uh, the guy even doesn't allow me to see his eyes. So I was like, I was with our two kids and our two kids were very, very young. It was a lot of hot. We were in the car, so they send us to a secondary revision. They see my face and they say, this guy is a drug dealer, which, you know, I agree. <laughs> so, but without explaining us. So the car was hot, we couldn't go out. So I went out, said, no, you have to wait in the car. It was sun hitting us. And, and then after 30 minutes, I went out. They went to the window, said, well, can I explain you? I live in, go, go to your, like, without seeing the eyes. Go to your car. Sir, it's just, I have a four-year-old guy. Go to your car. And I said, can you look me to the eye? Go to your car. It was the most rude, yeah. incredible. And unfortunately, sometimes, are sometimes Latino, original Latinos that are even toughest with yeah. us. Yeah. In, the, in the Moroccan territory, I will never forgot that I was with Kate and there was Kate Blanchett lying there in this incredible hot day in this shack. All, all, almost I, always I shoot in relocations. I hate construction, so, so it was very uncomfortable. And more uncomfortable, I feel that it's better. Maybe not, it's just my stupid obsession to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and, and we were just lying there, flies, smell, everything. And this guy, the, the veterinarian that supposedly will cure, will, will stitch her, it was the real veterinarian of the town. And his hands smelled to a goat. He had just put the, the hand in the ass of the goat, and it really smelled bad. And the white was incredible nice, but he has never seen the camera. So we were there and she was bleeding and the makeup guy, okay, more blood. And it was this zero blood. Yeah. And Kate was like, okay, roll camera. So I, he has the instruction. We have kind of rehearsed. So the first rule to this guy is just, you just have to say hospital, hospital. That's it, okay? So roll camera, you just touch her neck, you look to this guy, so to Brad, that was hit, that's it. And you say hospital, hospital. That's the whole thing, okay? <laughs> Great, roll camera. So Kate was like, just internally as in the character. <sighs> what are we gonna do? You know, she was really giving the whole thing, and the guy was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't laugh. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, take two. Okay, blah, blah. second take. Okay, Kate, okay. <sighs> uh, camera go to him, and then he looked to the camera and smiled. <laughs> Literally, went like 70 takes to get the hospital, hospital. And if you see the guy, is hospital, hospital. <laughs> and it was incredibly uh, painful. <laughs> that was the story of Babel. It was literally Babel in the set. I want to kill myself. <laughs> Life is like that when we are no, but when sometimes you are confronting extremely painful situations, uh, 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 contradictory. Uh, Life presents you sometimes in circumstances completely uh, absurd compared to that situation. And life doesn't stop. I mean, when you lose somebody that you love or something, you go out of the street and you can't understand why people laugh, why people still is working, why people is still dressing. So, I mean, when you have, and I thought that I wanted this character to suddenly be able to see how life and is still going on in the most grotesque way possible, extreme, when he's confronting an incredible loss of himself and all the people that have just died. So it was, again, to stretch the poles like that and how he, in a way, let him go and, and leave that kind of limbo and, and being seduced by the senses and the alcohol and the lights and the music and the coke and the sex and the, so it's only like the other side of life came, sensuality and everything, and he let it go and stopped resisting at least for one minute. I have been blessed by the fact that I have been working with the same people for almost 20 years. And I'm saying 20 years, not because I started 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and I have a very short, which I'm very humble to receive this uh, distinction tomorrow of career achievement when I have just four films. <laughs> and I'm real humble because I see the directors in the 40s and the 50s and they made 120. Right? Like, come on, he's humble, only what I feel and even embarrassing. But in these four films, in 11 years before I started doing films, I work already with Brigitte Brock, which is the production designer, which is an amazing production designer and an art director who really, she has this, oh, she 
she just, you know, it's in Spanish. She did Kronos, didn't she? She did Kronos she's too. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, she's German, living in Mexico for 35 years, and she's an amazing friend. And Rodrigo Prieto too, uh, which is the DP. So, you know, all that really, I think, make a big difference, because then when you create a family in a way, uh, you don't have to discuss already the beginning of all things, so that they know already what kind of world or what kind of, you know, you, you not, just with one gesture you have said what I will take one hour to one guy to understand why I have. So it's just like now with symbols, we know, you know, we, we know what, we, they know what I want and, and that's, that's great. They have a, a big credit in, in all that richness because it's a, it's a collaborative work, you know. And it can be dangerous, I have to say, because in a way, suddenly, what I don't want is to be, the, the thing is how to not be repeat and not to be carrying all these emotional, personal things to the set. That suddenly can become a burden, you know what I mean? So it's just, it, we have been growing together in that sense, and that, that has been fantastic, but sometimes it doesn't work, you know what I mean? Sometimes it can, it can go wrong until now, everything is fine, but, uh, but all, all of them really has enriched. Uh, that incredible because uh, oh, Martin Hernandez who started with me when I was 20 we did the first short film in, when I was 18 years old in the university in the college and now he's doing the sound design of all the films and, uh, and, and so he's basically my brother who I, and that, that is a real 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 advantage so I think it's good to, to work with people that is close to you and that is there for the right reasons I think well Alejandro you've been